Welcome to Bridge the Atlantic, where we get to know the people behind the creative industries. We're your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber Smith, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. And I'm singer, songwriter, and multi instrumentalist Marcio Novelli. If you'd like to be a part of my new solo album, please visit slash pledge. This week, we're joined by music entrepreneur D. Grant Smith, who helps musicians grow their audience through targeted initiatives, primarily in radio. He's the host of internationally syndicated radio show The Appetizer, which pairs well-known artist B-sides with new, emerging and unsigned artists to create a powerful listening experience. He's also the author of the DIY Musicians Radio Handbook and has an online course called the Indie Radio Promotion Course. As if all this wasn't enough, he's also the host of the DIY Artist Root Podcast. We're excited to jump in and learn more about radio promotion and strategies and techniques artists can try out today. Hey, man, how's it going? Hey, so good to be with you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, we're excited to talk to you, man. You're very welcome. It's funny because actually um, I invited you onto the show and didn't tell Marcio. And then Marcio <laughs> also invited wow. you on the show. Um, yeah. Which is, I guess, that's a, a compliment that we both really wanted you on the show, but we hadn't planned it. All yeah, it was a little embarrassing, actually. I messaged you and you're like, dude, I'm already coming on the show. I don't know, like, I, I, I usually really don't know our upcoming guests until like the week of just because... That's because you like it to be a surprise. You I like do. You like every episode to be like Christmas. No, actually, cause, well, <laughs> well, kind of, because like this show is all about spontaneity. It, you know, like, um, I, I like just almost meeting the person, not knowing that much about them and just having a conversation. And as I learn about you, so our, our listeners and viewers, they learn the same thing. So it's kind of, it keeps things fresh. And, um, but you know, I, I saw what you're doing and I've, I've, I've seen all your posts about it and, uh, I'm really excited about what you're doing. And, uh, wow. yeah, so I wanted you on and then, you know, I told Ross about it and he's like, yeah, dude, he's already coming on. I'm like, embarrassing. No, 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 no. I, I was, I was really, I was really honored, uh, to get the invitation from Ross. And then when you reached out to me, I'm like, this is really cool. Like, <laughs> both, both people are both people are, are seeking this and you know the without we'll, we'll, uh, we'll probably dive into this in a minute but like the the heart and soul of what i do with artists whether it's on my own radio show or on any of my platforms is all about relationship building and networking and it's all about uh showing that you value what somebody else does and who they are and that's what builds connection with with people and so for ross to reach out to me and he and i have had a couple conversations already anyways and I think you and I have talked, Marcio, on uh, Facebook once or twice, maybe. Mm -hmm. But for you to make that second, like, ask to be a part of the podcast, that was all of the initiation that was like, okay, this is a real deal. It's not just like, <laughs> well, we ran out of other people to talk to, so we're going to reach out to this, <laughs> so, this crazy so guy with a goatee. That's one side of the spectrum. And the other side of the spectrum, he's thinking in his mind, fuck, those, these guys communicate? <laughs> no, they can't, they can't no, no, no. Together. <laughs> There's a gigantic ocean that separates you guys. So, I mean, if, if, if days go by without going, hey, I, I talked to this dude, you know, like, know. it totally makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, before I even go, I can go into that and talk about Ross and I talking stupidly for hours and hours or talking for hours stupidly, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, okay. I, want to, I want to talk about you and I want you to tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. Okay, so um, let's see. That everyone should know is uh, I'm an old soul. Uh, I think about things from a perspective that's probably 30 years older than I actually am. I'm 34. Uh, but since I was a, since I was a kid and in my, in my twenties, uh, man, I, I think more like my grandfather did and he was an entrepreneur. He started his own business after he got out of world war two and he stayed there for, um, the entirety of his adult life. And then he sold his business and, and retired. But like, I, I think about things from the perspective of my grandparents' generation. I think about playing the long game. I think about building relationships because I want to make connections that last for a long time. I, everything that I've built has taken me forever to build it, and I'm still building it. I, the overnight success stories, I have a hard time relating to those, and I think that most people do too. So that's one thing about me. Another thing is uh, tying into that is uh, I'm all about relationship building for myself and for the, the people that I work with. So I don't just talk about this platform and I don't just talk about, you know, build stronger networks and build stronger communities and all that stuff because it's a buzzword and some sort of platform I'm trying to build so I can make money. All this stuff is what I do. It's what I'm the most passionate about. I only talk about things that I give a shit about. So that's why I talk about this stuff. And, and on the subject of giving a shit about things, I'm a music super fan. So what, on my radio show, I play music that I love. 
and I play music from artists that I connect with personally, and we have a reciprocal connection, and I talk about that a lot in my platforms. Uh, there's other artists that I played that I don't have a connection with yet. I'm going to, but like, it's all about like being a super fan and talking about super fandom is something that's very real. And speaking of super fans, a real big super fan of this guy. So uh, if, you, if you see Batman stuff on any of my things, that, that's that's what that's all about. Okay, we'll just blur it out for copyright infringement. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that's a coffee why, mug, man. I know, right? Um, we actually want to get coffee mugs. I think it'd be so cool. Ross and I sitting here with like Bridge Atlantic coffee mugs, just all <laughs> professional. Um, you know, that's why you're on the show, though, man. Because I pretty much, Ross, I think you can agree with this. I don't let me know. I, I feel like every single thing you said is almost exactly why Ross and I do this show. You know what I mean? It was just like oh, exactly yeah. the same. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it's a passion for me. Yeah, I'm not going to reiterate everything, but it's a passion for music and just a desire to share other people's art and to connect and network. I, I hate the word network. It's not in a bad way. Network in a good way to just make friends. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think it's kind of been interest. one of it's kind of been one of the the unexpected things that's come out of the show. Is obviously we wanted to showcase people's stories and um, and the advice that they would offer to other people who want to get to their kind of level. But I think really one of the, the unexpected things, which I guess in some ways it's become one of the main things on on a personal level is the fact that we can bring people on and really get to know them and then build relationships with people that we wouldn't really have had a chance to meet or you know connect with. Um, and yeah, we've made, we've so, made friends off the show, like with people oh, I yeah, consider friends totally. now. Even like you know just through the internet for the most part, we've actually we we've, we've met up with some people in person because of the show and actually become you know friends it's amazing you know and that's why i love not just to go on about our show ross but i think we're just relating it's it's great to have another person on the show that is dedicating you know a lot of their time and and part of their life to to this you know and the same thing is true for the podcast that i have like the Hmm. there's people there's like uh and i'll I'll throw a name out um somebody you guys should definitely get on your show uh his name is chandler coil he does the coil report and he and his brother do music geek services i don't you probably know him uh ross or you probably know uh, berkeley online yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Berkeley online. So, so Chandler and Jay too, but, but, uh, my, my first connection was with Chandler and there's been so many new connections that I've been able to make from just knowing him because he, he's, he always is thinking of, I consider myself one of those old fashioned telephone operators with a giant switchboard. You know, you call in and you're like, I need to get connected to this person. And so go over and like, well, this person's here. So I'm going to, I'm going to connect you over. You don't have the connection, but I do. So I'm going to connect you over here. Chandler does that. And he, his network is so vast and he's always thinking of, well, I should connect this person with this person, this person. With, so like that kind of, that kind of networking and connections building, you were talking about networking, not liking the term. And I don't like it either. It because, sounds douchebaggy. <laughs> well, it's turned, yeah. it's turned into this thing. It's turned into this thing that it's not. Yeah. And, and I want to talk about that in, in a little bit as we get mm-hmm. into this stuff. But like the, the thing that is not, it is, it is not clicking a button and suddenly now you have a relationship with somebody. You know, networking is what we're doing right now. It's having a conversation and building something over time. All friendships are built over time. They're not built instantly. Clicking follow me or like me or add me as a friend does not put me in your network. Now we just have, now we have the connection point to be able to have that. But that's mm-hmm. not how, that's not it in and of itself. Exactly. I, I look at it as networking for me is building friendships within an industry that you're working in. Yeah. You know, it just happens to be, you know, um, I really want to jump into these questions. We have some some questions uh, planned for you. Usually we don't admit that, you know, because I swear we don't do <laughs> notes in the show. But, you know, I do want to know uh, most artists do want to get their tracks played on the radio, even though it's a whole different game in 2016 now for the last 10 years or so but why do you think it's important for artists to uh, get airplay and where is a good place for them to get started uh to explore this route okay so a couple different things um and i i want to be very very brief with this most artists when they're talking when they when they think of radio they don't think of the same kind of radio that people that they actually need to reach are thinking about most artists, when they think of radio, they think of the uh, pop commercial stations. And I, I don't know if, what it's like necessarily in, in the UK, Ross, but, but Marcio, you, you and I know in, in, the, in the US, the pop commercial stations play the same 25 songs all day long. And for whatever reason, there are actual human beings that listen to this at some point. And I have not figured out if these people are, are programmed like robots 
or if if they're really real. I, I used to work with a couple <laughs> of them in an office, and I, I do know this: they weren't paying attention to what they were listening to. It was just music that was in the background because it was the same stuff over and over again. And one day, I asked this girl I was w- working with, I was like, "What? I just got to know what song that is." And she's like, "Oh, what are you talking about? The song that just played? We we've been listening to it for the last like two and a half weeks. Do you know what song it is? Oh no, I I just it's I'm I'm on the station." That's not radio, guys. Radio is made by people who give a shit about what they're doing and who love the artists that they play and who talk about them all the time. Their minds are engaged. Their hearts are engaged. Their souls are engaged. It's a part of them. That's real radio. That's public radio, commercial radio, and indie radio. So when you think about radio, if you're only thinking about this pop stuff, and I want to figure out how I can get my music up there with Beyonce and Coldplay and all these pop people, you are missing so much opportunity to get discovered and, and to, to connect with real music fans like me and like you guys. Mm-hmm. So, so radio, how do you start? Start by looking at the right radio and get off of this whole concept that radio is pop. Pop is something else entirely. I haven't figured out how it still exists other than the fact that there are still labels that make a shit ton of money. That's what it comes down to though. Major, major radio, like we're top, you know, 40 or whatever. It really is. People don't realize it really is. You have to be on a major label. They have unbelievable amount of money to get you on that radio. So it's actually, it's kind of corrupt. It really is corrupt actually. Yeah. Um, that's why there, there's only, you know, it's not the radio station saying, Oh, we, we just want to play top 40. So no, it's, there's no way you're going to get in there. Just as simple as that, unless you sell millions and get on a major label. Well, it's also, station. it's, and it's also a, a charting thing. So, so with billboard, um, with billboard charting and, and with, with trying to chart tracks and, and there, there is a, there is a good side to that for artists when you can get to that level where your stuff is charting on any, whether it's, whether it's charting on indie radio or not, cause there is an indie radio charting too. But when your tracks are, are, are getting that kind of rotation, that that's a benefit. But uh, to, to answer to answer your question, uh, the way to get started is by looking at um, looking at public and community radio stations. And I talk about this in, in great detail and I give a lot of data on NPR, for instance. And NPR is not the only public radio platform, but it's a great model to look at for indie and public radio stations and community radio stations because their whole basis, their whole platform is built around individual listeners and individual supporters. So if you think about it from this perspective, if you're trying to engage with a radio platform that has built their business model around connecting with individual contributors, you are getting in front of people who are investing their money in the things that they love versus the people who are just listening to something in the background and not paying attention to it. I think you kind of answered this a little bit in, in your previous answer, but what would you say some of the mistakes you see artists make when they're trying to get the attention of those who make the decisions about, you know, what mm. makes it to radio? Is, is, it, is it simply that they are targeting the wrong kind of radio stations or do you see other mistakes that they're making that are preventing them from getting airplay? Or are they contacting the wrong people, even at the radio stations that they should be contacting? Okay, you guys have an- the answers in the question. So, <laughs> uh, so, so, so you... you it's interesting. I, I will tell you this much. The way that you reach out to somebody, let's go back to the networking thing that you said a minute ago, Marcia. The, the, the whole networking thing, that is the number one mistake that people make. And that's not only the mistake that artists make, that's the mistake that indie radio promoters do, quote unquote radio pluggers. If you, if you call yourself a radio plugger, that almost kind of ties, to me, it ties you into this like kind of skeevy sort of, what, what are you? Plugger, what the hell does that mean? Uh, <laughs> uh, there are indie labels that do this. There are uh, P- PR organizations that do this. And I say that they do this because I get emails every single day that are terrible. They're blankets. They're either blanket text messages that I know are sent out to 150 people because I can see the to deal. And there's a zillion email addresses. Dear him or her, to whom it may concern. <laughs> they get your name wrong. Sorry. <laughs> they, yes. Yeah. All that stuff. Or, or they've attached an EPK to an email and they've sent it out in a BCC sort of thing. All of this is terrible. And I'll tell you why. Um, 
I just I just put a video on my YouTube page that, that addresses what I'm about to say to you guys. But here's the thing. We tell ourselves we don't have time to address individual emails and we don't have time to go after people on an individual basis because in the back of our minds, we've seen all these people build these massive platforms and grow these massive numbers by doing things very blanket statement, by bombarding people with the same message over and over and over again. We, we see people that are, that are proposing this strategy in the marketing channels and in the music channels, and we think, well, that must be what works. It's not. Because all of us, most of us who have limited budgets, and we're not spending zillions of dollars on Facebook ads to get our brands out there, what we have to rely on is building one-to-one relationships. The more closer a relationship you build with somebody, the longer they're going to stick with you and the more they're going to remember you. So your real job in your reaching out to audience and excuse me, reaching out to radio is you've got to get them to like you. Like you. We haven't even started talking about your music yet because if I don't like somebody, I'm not going to take the time to listen to their stuff. I don't have that kind of time to give. But if I like you, then I have a reason to go listen to your music. And that's a completely different story altogether. So the number one mistake that artists are making is the way that they reach out to people. If you don't address somebody individually and start a conversation by talking about what you're doing and how I want to be a part of what you're doing, you are wasting all of your time. Even if that time is two and a half minutes taking a blanket statement and messaging a zillion people. That was two and a half minutes that you wasted because nobody's gonna respond to that. We recognize spam really easily and we hate it. We trash it. And then we usually remember the person that sent it to us. So the next time they try to send us something again, that I know what they want. I'm not gonna scratch your back. Sorry, dude. You don't wanna build a connection with me. I can't do anything for you. But if you go the other. Yeah, that was like <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's just uh, yeah. If you go um, the op- if, but if you go the opposite direction and you will take a little bit of time. And I say all of this not for for a couple reasons. One, I'm a syndicated radio show host because I fucking did this myself. And I did this exactly the way that I'm telling other people to do it and I'm still doing this stuff right now because I have a book that I want to get in front of other people. And so I'm contacting people and saying, "Hey, I like your platform. I have a resource I want to share with you. And how can I give this to you and help benefit your audience? Because your audience needs this stuff. Can we, can we collaborate together? You know what? Tell, tell happens? everyone the title of your book. The DIY Musicians Radio Handbook. Go get it. <laughs> but everything that I'm talking about with you guys right now is what I talk about in the book. And this stuff works. It's working for me right now. It's working for the artists that have bought it already and are reading it and are diving into this stuff. It's building one-to-one relationships. And if you are not committed to building one-to-one relationships with your individual fans, so you can individually grow your super fan tribe, if you're not going to do that with real people, then don't waste anybody's time reaching out to media because they don't care. Dude, I've been doing this for years. This is what I love, everything you're saying. I've been doing this for years, and it comes down to just being genuine and authentic. Everyone wants to suddenly have a stadium full of people. You know, uh, there's a place for that, like we were talking about major labels and everything. It's a different world, and it's a different... uh, It it depends on what kind of place you are at. Like, you know, you said, we don't have money for this millions of dollars worth of promotion. I take the time to talk to people individually. You know what I mean? And that is just, it's so important because if they're going to take the time to listen to my music, I can take the time to look at their art or listen to something they're doing or just have a conversation for crying out loud. Um, I really want to keep talking to you. So let's whiz through this 20 questions section so I, we can ask you a couple more questions. Okay. I want this to be the fastest fucking 20 questions we've ever done. All right. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Meat or veggies? Meat. Twitter or Facebook? Twitter. Batman or Superman? Batman every fucking day. Yoga or yogurt? Yoga. Canada or Scotland? Scotland. Vampires or zombies? Zombies. Indie or major? Indie. Holy shit. Of course. What kind of fucking question is that? Talent or attitude? (laughs) Uh, Attitude. Cool. Baseball or football? American or European? Uh, I'm going to go with American. American football. Fiction or nonfiction? Ooh, Jesus. Uh, nonfiction. Jason Byrne or Jack Bauer? He says that so like, so... I know, so actually, I, did, I said that wrong. Says Jason, Jason Bourne. Bourne. 
No, Bourne. Bourne. I don't know why oh, I said Bourne. I was, I was like, I need, do I need to ask who these people are? Because that's going to possibly make me look like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> no, it's just Ross's accent. So Sorry, ja- yeah. Jason Bourne or who? Or Jack Barrow from 24. I have never seen a 24 episode, so Bourne. The Office or 30 Rock? 30 Rock. Captain America or Iron Man? Ooh, I like the question. Uh, Captain America. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? <laughs> There's a story I'm going to tell you in just a minute, but Michael Jackson. Well, just tell us the story. What's the story? No, no, no we got to go. We got to go through. Okay, the okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Friends or Seinfeld? Seinfeld. Oh, shit. No, no, no. That was a, that was a question. Fine. It's all fine. It's like fine. That. Bruce Springsteen or Brian Adams? Bruce Springsteen. Whale or kale? To eat kale. Oh, okay. whatever. <laughs> we have no idea. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Bette Midler. Or the Riddler? Ooh. They're the same person. Ooh. Okay. We've had a few people think that. I think you're on to something. And the final question is just the stupid, mean question we've done for 80 plus interviews. Ross or Marcio? Both. Thank you. Someone doesn't actually pick. This is kind of a trick question, and people actually pick, and we're like surprised that they pick. You're bastards to everyone of our past guests, but like 90% of that have actually picked, and usually pick Ross. I'm so offended. Oh, you did. I'm guessing that if if uh, if you have more British and Scottish folk on, oh, we don't. Will, oh no, we don't. We have no, most. Will cho- well, maybe maybe they would choose your accents, and and because no offense, dude, Ross, your accent's awesome, and I, isn't it amazing? And, and your hair is awesome. So I, know. I, I wonder, and, and you're, you're on the right hand side of the screen. So I wonder <laughs> if like all these mental things like predispose us to go on and, the like, side. Most people want to go to the right. But you know, you know yeah. that this was all planned. Like this isn't my real accent. It's not my real hair. It's not my real side of the screen. You know, yeah. that's all, this has all been very carefully thought out. You know? Okay. What's the story? I want to hear the okay. story. So, so actually two stories. When you ask Bruce Springsteen and whoever else, Springsteen kicks everybody's ass every time. I'm a Springsteen super fan. I all the stuff I talked about super fan. So you could have asked me Springsteen or uh, the only the only the only legitimate fight would be Springsteen or Batman, and I would have sat there like going, "Oh man, I don't know," and I would have had okay. to like Springsteen or Batman. Bonus twenty one question. I'm gonna have to like break down like the the qualifications on who would win. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's they a terrible. Tie. They can tie. Terrible. It's okay. Yeah, it's a tie. <laughs> One's one's the win for fiction. One's the win for nonfiction. How's that? So, so that my, my that's fair. So my <laughs> Michael Bolton thing. Funny story. I only have in in recent times come to appreciate Michael Bolton, and it was after Finally. he did that that little stint on uh, Saturday Night Live for the Captain Jack Sparrow song. That that turned the corner for me. I'm like, oh, this guy has actual talent. So when, when I started the appetizer, I had only three qualifications for what I would play. Because people would ask me, what is it that you what is it that you won't play? What is it that you will play? And and my three qualifications were this no boy bands, no Michael Bolton, and no Yanni. Anything else in the spectrum of music could potentially find its way on the show. And I think I broke the rule in 2013 when I was celebrating the 10th anniversary of the show and I played a Michael Bolton B side because I, I actually dug it up and I'm like, this is an actually good song. It wasn't anything that any radio station has ever played before. He has a good voice and I want to play the captain Jack Sparrow song on my show, but I don't think anybody would get it. They'd probably tune in in the middle. Like what the hell is this? And They're he used always- to be a metal head. He, his background is actually metal. He used to be in a metal band. Was it the seventies? Yeah, was it Ross? Late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, he I think, learned yeah. what worked for him. You know what I mean? <laughs> we want to get him on the show, man. <laughs> Wait, when, do do? Oh, I, I will. I will do anything I can do to help make that happen. <laughs> I have no connections with him whatsoever. But it's okay. We'll, we'll we'll put all our connections together. I'll, I'll put put my mental my mental cap on, different than this one, but my mental cap <laughs> on, and just will it to happen. <laughs> Dude, can you give us one piece really quickly of actionable advice that artists listening to this episode can do right now in terms of getting themselves uh, in a good position for radio airplay? Okay. Um, one piece of advice. Okay, so I, I'm just going to share my, my mantra for everything that I do with you. And and this has been what, what's been successful for me. It's been what's successful for the 
I want to say 1% of indie DIY artists that are actually making a, a, a really solid career out of this stuff. They're doing things differently than everybody else. So maybe this is the advice. The bandwagon approach doesn't work. It's being uh, positioned and sold as though that's the thing to do because everybody else is doing it. But most of the things that everybody else does, the, 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 there's, a, there's a line that says, if you follow the bandwagon, you have to step in the shit. And, and that's totally true because somebody else is making that decision and somebody else is leading that pathway and you are way behind the curve on it. So look at what the bandwagons are doing and go, yeah, no, here's what you do. We've, all, we've been talking about this the entire time. It is the golden rule, which is love somebody the way that you want them to love you. Or as Gandhi said it, I just quoted Jesus there, but as Gandhi said it, be the change that you want to see in the world. And there's tons of other people that have said the same thing and have the, the background and the fruit to back it up. So what that does, though, is it has to change your perspective on the way that you see things and the way that you see the world and the way that you see yourself. So in my podcast, I had this conversation with, uh, with Seth Godin, the best-selling marketing expert. And what, what I've been talking about with, with you guys in terms of being real with people and, and connecting with them on, on where they are and starting a connection or relationship, that's how I got Seth Godin to be on my podcast. I didn't know him before. I've just read all of his books and read his blog every day. And actually, my, my coach, Steve Palfreyman, just challenged me and said, reach out to somebody that you don't think you would ever be able to reach out to. And see if you can get a connection. And so I sent him an email and I said some very specific things, but I was just honest and open. And then I said, you know, I don't know if you do podcasts. I know you don't do one-to-one coaching, but if you ever do, do podcasts, and he wasn't at the time, but if you ever do podcasts, I'd love for you to be online because what you talk about every day on your blog is exactly what people in my shoes need. And three minutes after I sent that email, he replied to me. And that's how that happened. So all this stuff about how I don't have time. I don't have time to make one-to-one connections. If you want to get in front of really influential people, take the time. It's worth it. So what Seth said to me that has put words into this idea of things I've been doing for years and years and years, but this 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 is the words that I'm going to share with you. Our job is to farm and not go hunting. So I asked him a question that was centered around this idea that we are always thinking about what can we do to get out of this desert that we're in that's so arid and so what, what is it that we do? We want to go to the promised land of success. And so I asked him, what is one, I asked him, what is one piece of advice that you would give to an artist? And he said, the idea that the grass is always greener somewhere else, that's what gets us in trouble. We need to realize we already have a lot of great grass. What we need to do is farm it and not go hunting. And every day you and I see people that are trying to just hunt, 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 trying to find new fans, just go after them and bring them in and bring them in and bring them in instead of culture, cultivating and nurturing relationships. We have some great connections now. If we cultivate these relationships, they will produce fruit. The more we cultivate it, the more fruit we get to produce. And the more fruit that is produced, the more we can expand our territory. So our jobs to grow is to do this different thing that the bandwagons aren't doing. Let them go hunting. They're going to have fun not coming back with shit. Let's farm and let's have fruit that lasts for years and years and years. Ross, I think I have my new music biz crush. <laughs> just going to say, you and I are going to, in some form, work together at some point. You just have to. Awesome. This is it's all about people that you're on the same wavelength with. I, I, it's very rare that I agree with every single thing that our guests say. It's wow. just, I'm right there with you, man. This is beautiful. And you know what? Even I will live in a minute. I've been guilty of that mentality at some points of just hunt because it's what we're told. It's what we, we, we see constantly, you know, and that always gets me personally into trouble because it's wrong. You don't, it's not about it's quality over quantity. And like you said, I love that at staying in my brain, man, farm rather than hunt. I'm vegan. So I don't want to hunt anyways. I want to farm and grow those fruits and vegetables. That's all I'll remember it, man. Awesome. Um, Everyone needs to check out everything you're doing beyond just this show. I want them to go to dgrantsmith.com as well as appetizerradio.com. Um, can you please tell everyone where you, what your Twitter, uh, Facebook, and YouTube are? Sure. Uh, Twitter is at Appetizer Radio, and the Appetizer is a capital A. Everything else is lowercase. Uh, Facebook for me is at the D Grant Smith, all lowercase. 
And uh, my my appetizer stuff on on Facebook is uh, the Appetizer Radio Show, and I'm pretty sure if you search for it, it'll it's a it's a little uh, old fashioned looking radio. That's a it's an A with a little. Uh, in, in your YouTube, YouTube is uh, some really long URL that I don't remember. <laughs> okay, but uh, we'll, you could probably get to it from your website, right? If, if yeah, you can get to it from my <laughs> website, or you can you can go to YouTube and type in D Grant Smith, and there are some. Uh, you guys are really good with lighting. And I have shot some videos in my living room that have terrible lighting. So if you can, if you can ignore the fact that the lighting is awful, the messaging in that is 120% true and exactly what you need. Perfect. And as for me, I'm working on my second solo album. You can be part of it at marcinovelli.com slash pledge. I also recently released my award-winning documentary, Walking Proof, which chronicles the making of my debut solo album. You can watch that for free, given back to the people, at marcinovelli.com slash walking proof. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify, which are all my name, Marcio Novelli. And I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. You can check out my work and my blog at electrickiwi.co.uk. And you'll also find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. This episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton, The Rockstar Advocate, Buck Naked Soap Company, and Social Surge. All links to each of these companies are in the show notes, so please go check them out because they keep this show alive. And if you want to be one of those awesome people, uh, visit patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. And uh, this is a bonus question. We will do a little bonus. This is a longer interview than usual because we just love, love talking to you so much. But uh, speaking of indie radio promotion, we believe you got a special offer for our viewers and listeners. That's right. That's right. So, uh, so my book is is the uh, DIY Musician's Handbook, and I will, um, I will, I will give you guys the link so you can you can uh, put that in the in the show notes. But if you will go there, uh, the book is seventeen fifty US. But if you if you will add it to your cart and then use the promo code B uncommon all lowercase and all one word, you get like fifty percent off or something. I think that it's like ten bucks. So um, yeah, there there you go. I, I I want you guys to have more fruit with what you do. That's far more important to me than selling a shit ton of books. This every everything that I talked about here in our conversation is everything that's in the book, just in a whole lot more detail. So. Dude, this has been such an awesome. honor. It really has been. Um, I can't wait to uh, continue chatting with you and building a uh, a true friendship, not networking. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Just to tie everything Absolutely. together, right? Absolutely. Uh, come back again soon. All the best of luck with everything you're doing, man. You rock. You really do. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been an absolute treat and a real joy. Uh, I've been looking forward to it for the past two weeks, and, and you didn't disappoint, man. This was awesome. Neither did you. Awesome. Rock on. <laughs> yeah. High fives all around. <laughs> Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. Thanks again for being awesome, and we'll see you on next week's episode. Oh,